These are the papyrus scrolls of Herculaneum, 1800 ancient books written on sheets of plant fiber, flash seared by the volcanic heat. Experts are stunned as X-ray scans pierce a charred scroll. It was written uh, with ink that has some metal in it, and it was also written on animal skin rather than papyrus, and reveals secrets no one expected inside Herculaneum's lost library. For the first time in 2,000 years, sealed papyri are beginning to speak again. What these scans uncover changes everything we thought we knew about the ancient world. The hatch, the moment a blackened cylinder locks into place inside a particle accelerator, the mystery at the center of Herculaneum's lost library feels almost alive. Giorgio Angelotti checks the chamber, steps back, and seals the heavy door. The object inside looks like a chunk of charcoal, nothing more, yet the team treats it with the kind of caution reserved for something priceless. A burst of X-ray energy cuts through the lump, scattering data across monitors. Patterns flicker, lines sharpen, and for a split second it feels as if the past is pushing through the static. This is the part no one expected. 2,000 years after the eruption buried an entire villa, scientists are now peering inside scrolls that were never meant to survive. The experiment feels more like surgery than archaeology, and each scan carries the possibility that something once thought destroyed might finally be readable. Even though nobody says it aloud, everyone in the control room knows exactly what they're hoping for. If there is text inside, even a trace, it would mean the ancient library is not silent anymore. As the beam completes its pass, Angelotti leans in toward the display, searching for anything that breaks the monotony of carbon on carbon. Something faint appears, like a contour hidden under layers of time. What appears on the monitor is not a blur or a guess. It is a word, Greek, written before the Roman Empire reached its height. For the first time in 2,000 years, a sealed scroll has been read without ever being opened, but reaching this point was anything but easy. The library turned to stone. The story behind Herculaneum's lost library begins long before anyone pointed an x-ray at a charcoal-shaped cylinder. It starts in a place where the past was frozen by disaster, then forgotten beneath layers of earth. Herculaneum was once a quiet seaside retreat for wealthy Romans, a contrast to the busy streets of nearby Pompeii. Among its grand homes stood a sprawling villa thought to belong to Lucius Calpurnius Piso, Julius Caesar's father-in-law. Inside it sat something almost unimaginable today, an organized library filled with hundreds of papyrus scrolls arranged along shelves overlooking the Bay of Naples. Nothing about the collection was meant to survive, Papyrus decays quickly in Italy's humid climate, and only deserts tend to preserve texts for centuries. But then, the eruption of AD 79 changed everything. When Vesuvius erupted, Herculaneum was hit by a torrent of superheated gases, ash, and mud that buried the town so quickly that even wooden furniture remained where people left it. The heat was intense enough to dehydrate the scrolls instantly, carbonizing them into compact black cylinders. Ironically, the disaster that destroyed the city is the only reason these writings still exist. When excavators rediscovered the villa in the 1750s, workers mistook the scrolls for lumps of coal. Once they realized what they had found, the excitement turned to frustration. The papyrus layers were fused together. Touching them caused ripping. Pressing them caused collapse. Every attempt to open one became a gamble. The first curator, Camilo Paderni, cut into scrolls, scraped out interiors, and kept only outer layers. His method allowed scholars to see a few Greek words, but destroyed the rest. Later, Antonio Piaggio tried a slower approach. He built a device that used animal gut and fish glue to gradually unroll the papyrus. He managed to open about 18 scrolls, confirming that many contained philosophical writings by Philodemus, a follower of Epicurean thought. Even so, each unrolled scroll came with tears, missing sections and irreversible damage. The rest of the collection stayed untouched because the risk outweighed the reward. Hundreds of scrolls remained sealed. Scholars believed they held works on ethics, music, the nature of the gods, and other philosophical subjects. Some even suspected that unpublished drafts existed among them, possibly early versions of ideas that shaped Roman intellectual life. 
Yet there was no safe way to reveal any of it. For more than two centuries, the lost library was considered unreadable. This is why the modern breakthroughs feel almost unreal. The more researchers studied the carbonized rolls, the more they realized how impossible the task was. The ink used in the scrolls was soot-based. That meant the writing was made of carbon, and the scrolls were now almost entirely carbon as well. Trying to distinguish ink from papyrus was like trying to see black paint on a piece of burned wood. Every imaging method failed. Even high-resolution scans produced only blank interiors. Despite this, rumors persisted that the villa held far more than what had already been uncovered. Only part of the structure had been excavated. Maps showed deeper levels beneath thick layers of volcanic debris. Some experts believed these areas might contain a second library, possibly a Latin one. If true, the site could hold Roman histories, political writings, or material never cited by any surviving ancient author. But as long as the scrolls could not be read, digging further made little sense. No one wanted to unearth more artifacts that would simply crumble in the light. Everything changed once scientists realized the solution would not come from handling the papyri, but from looking inside them without opening them at all. That shift created a new possibility, one that set the stage for a race that no one had predicted. The race to read the unreadable. For years, the idea of reading a sealed Herculaneum scroll sounded closer to wishful thinking than science. The problem was simple to describe and nearly impossible to solve. The ink was made from carbon. The papyrus was now carbon. Standard imaging could not tell the two apart. Every scan produced the same smooth interior with no visible writing, as if the scrolls were empty. The challenge attracted Brent Seals, a computer scientist who had been working on digitally restoring fire-damaged manuscripts. Earlier in his career, he had already managed to flatten and read medieval pages that had fused together in old collections. That success pushed him toward a bigger goal, one that required him to rethink how information could be recovered without physically opening a single page. When he first scanned damaged books with x-ray technology, the ink in those manuscripts behaved like bone in a medical image, showing up clearly. That early result convinced him that deeper scanning could also work for ancient material, such as scrolls. The Herculaneum scrolls quickly became his focus, but they refused to cooperate. The soot-based ink blended perfectly with the charred papyrus. There were no metallic elements to highlight, no visible contrast for the scanners to catch. In 2009, SEALs completed the first CT scans of an intact scroll. The images were impressive, but frustrating. They revealed the internal structure of the papyrus layers in beautiful detail, yet still no writing appeared. The scrolls looked like tightly rolled tree rings with nothing on them. Instead of abandoning the project, Seals pushed for a new approach that combined physics and computer science. He believed that if computers could map the three-dimensional layers, then digital unwrapping could flatten the scrolls virtually. But that still required one missing piece. Someone had to teach a machine how to see ink that humans could not. That missing piece arrived from an unexpected place. A global competition challenged coders, students, and researchers to detect ink patterns inside the scrolls. Suddenly, people who had never handled an ancient artifact were helping push the work forward. Participants trained software to recognize subtle textures inside broken fragments. One student noticed a faint crackle pattern that seemed to appear only where ink existed. Another figured out how to stitch tiny papyrus surfaces into a continuous digital sheet. Progress came from dozens of small, surprising discoveries rather than one dramatic leap. By late 2023, the impossible started to become possible. For the first time, a clear Greek word appeared inside a sealed scroll. Then more characters emerged, then entire lines. Digital unwrapping began to show that the scrolls were not silent at all. They simply needed technology that could detect differences so subtle that the human eye would never see them. This new momentum created a sense of urgency. If these scrolls could be unlocked, what else might be waiting inside the still buried parts of the villa? The answer arrived the moment X-ray scans finally exposed what experts had been chasing for centuries. Secrets revealed after 2,000 years. Experts are stunned because the X-ray scans did more than show faint patterns inside a charcoal-shaped cylinder. They confirmed that Herculaneum's lost library was never truly lost at all. For the first time in 2,000 years, sealed scrolls began revealing their secrets without being opened. What had survived beneath volcanic debris was not silence, but fully formed writing, waiting for the right technology to bring it back into the world. Inside the particle accelerator, 
generator, the scans cut through layer after layer of carbonized papyrus. At first, the images look like the usual tight spirals, familiar, but unreadable. Then, the new ink detection models did something older systems could never manage. They pulled out shapes hidden deep inside the scroll, tiny variations that separated ink from the surrounding carbon. Letters emerged, real letters, in real handwriting. Written before the Roman Empire reached its height, the breakthrough felt surreal. A sealed scroll that had been considered hopeless suddenly displayed a Greek word, porphyros, meaning purple. More characters followed, then entire lines from a philosophical text that had not been read since antiquity. The team kept going, feeding the machine more scans and refining the models. One day, inside another unopened scroll, a full title appeared, Philodemus, on vices. It was the first time a book title had ever been read from within a scroll that remained completely sealed. The achievement proved that the work was not theoretical anymore. The library was speaking clearly. Ideas written in a villa near the Bay of Naples had survived fire, time, and centuries of failed attempts. They were revealed after 2,000 years, preserved inside what looked like burned debris. The discovery reshaped expectations instantly. Scholars knew that Philodemus had written about ethics, music, and the nature of pleasure, but no one expected such clean text to be hiding inside carbonized rolls. The new scans showed that the structure of the scrolls remained remarkably intact. The ink, invisible to the eye, had left its imprint in ways modern algorithms could finally detect. What surprised researchers the most was how much material seemed recoverable. The scrolls were not random fragments. They were organized works, copied carefully by scribes, stored deliberately in Piso's villa, and now readable again through beams of light and code. This was the moment the search expanded. If the scrolls already decoded came from one corner of the library, what waited in the portions of the villa, still buried under thick layers of volcanic material, could a second collection exist deeper underground? The possibility shifted the entire project into a new phase. What this discovery unlocks. This breakthrough reopened a doorway into a library that was thought to be permanently sealed by the eruption of AD 79. For the first time, scholars could look at the scrolls not as damaged relics, but as living documents filled with recoverable ideas. This changed the entire scale of the discovery. It was no longer about one word or one title. It became a question of how much of the ancient world could now be restored. The scrolls that have been scanned so far come from a single section of Piso's villa, most of them tied to the teachings of Philodemus. Many are early drafts or private copies that never circulated widely in the Roman world world. That alone makes them extraordinary. They contain thoughts and arguments that may exist nowhere else. But the larger story lies beneath the unexcavated parts of the villa. Archaeologists have known for years that the building extends under layers of hardened volcanic material. Plans drawn by early explorers show hallways, rooms, and deeper levels that have not been touched since antiquity. This matters because Roman households often kept separate libraries for different subjects and languages. The scrolls decoded so far are Greek. If a Latin library exists in the unexcavated area, it could contain political commentary, legal works, historical accounts, or writings by authors whose names have vanished from the historical record. Even a single recovered text from that section would reshape our understanding of Roman intellectual life. The potential impact reaches further. The combination of X-ray imaging and AI now makes it possible to scan unopened scrolls from other sites as well. Collections once considered unreadable, such as folded papyri or damaged manuscripts from Egypt, suddenly look promising. The methods developed for Herculaneum could unlock entire categories of ancient writing that have remained hidden for centuries. For the first time, there is a real chance that lost books, lost arguments, and lost voices can be restored without risking the destruction of a single artifact. The idea that an intact ancient library might stand ready to be read is no longer speculation. It is becoming a practical goal. A new race beneath the ash. The revelation that sealed scrolls can be read without ever being opened has transformed Herculaneum into one of the most important archaeological frontiers in the world. What began as a handful of promising scans has grown into a coordinated effort involving physicists, classicists, computer scientists, and volunteers who study the data from their homes. 
Each new advance pushes the project further, proving that the ancient library is not a relic of the past, but an active source of knowledge that is still unfolding. Giorgio Angelotti continues scanning scrolls at advanced facilities across Europe, often spending long nights in control rooms, while the machine captures layer after layer of interior detail. Early tests show that scans taken at even higher resolution make subtle ink features easier for AI models to detect. The only drawback is time. Each upgraded scan takes hours, and a full collection of hundreds could take years. Yet the team accepts the challenge, because every scroll offers the possibility of uncovering material no one has seen since antiquity. Meanwhile, the global community surrounding the project grows larger. Coders refine algorithms that can unwrap digital surfaces more smoothly. Imaging specialists focus on making faint textures clearer. Archaeologists debate whether the villa should be excavated further, especially the lower levels buried under deep volcanic debris. Those areas could contain an entire second library, possibly filled with Latin works that never survived elsewhere. For many scholars, the chance to unlock a complete ancient collection is worth the logistical difficulty of returning to a site that has remained sealed for centuries. The project has also inspired other researchers to revisit artifacts once considered hopeless. Damaged papyri from Egypt, folded manuscripts from the ancient island of Elephantine, and fire-darkened letters from later periods may all be candidates for digital recovery. What is happening at Herculaneum is not simply a single discovery, it is the beginning of a shift in how lost texts can be rescued. For the first time in history, technology makes it possible to read books that have remained closed since the day they were created. The scrolls inside Piso's villa survived because disaster sealed them in place. Now, after 2,000 years, the world is finally preparing to hear everything they still have to say. If archaeologists decide to excavate the untouched sections of Piso's villa, what do you think they're most likely to uncover first? A second library filled with Latin texts or entirely unknown works that no one even knew existed? Let us know in the comments.